Hi, and uh, welcome to Dobbo's Fishing Adventures. Well, I just thought I'd give you a review on one of the latest uh, gadgets that I've got on my boat, which is the Fusion Stereo. Uh, it's the all singing and dancing, the good one, top of the range. Takes the iPod, Bluetooth, and DAB. So uh, in a second I shall show you all this, the installation and everything. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. Also, uh, I've added a searchlight. It's a good one, it's from ASAP Supplies. Fully full remote, wired remote, and a uh, wireless remote. Uh, I haven't set the wireless remote up yet, but I will show you that. But yeah, right, let's get to it. Let's have a look uh, on my boat, Sea Vixen, as you can see. Just pan around there. Uh, it's a lovely sunny day, but no, I just thought I'd do this. So excuse me while I just pan round and uh, we'll go and have a look at the stereo. Right. Due to the amount of, or should I say, the lack of space on this boat, <coughs> I've actually made a moulding. I don't know if you can see that. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to stop it, <coughs> restart it, and just move you around. Right, here we go. Here it is. It's made in its own self-contained moulding. Being a boat builder, it's relatively easy for me to make a moulding. But uh, this is where I've installed the, the fusion. I'll just take the, take the cover off for you. There it is, it's the MSUD 750. Fits in the box, a treat. Wasn't easy getting all the wires from the DAB up to it, but I got there in the end. And on the side here, I have an inspection hatch. I'll just undo this. Oh, inside, oh God. That is tight. That's the heat. Two seconds. Get it undone. There we go. Right, sorry about that. Let's have a look. So this just comes out of here and everything else where it's all installed is in the back of this. There we go, right. I don't know if you can see in there, relatively neat. That there, that's the DAB transponder from the aerial that links in and gives me DAB. It's a normal stereo as well. FM, AM. But yeah, it's all self-contained in there. Lovely and neat. Fully waterproof. Won't get any water ingression in there. It's also NMEA, this stereo. So I can link it to me Raymarine, Axioms, no trouble at all if I, if I wanted to. <clears throat> I probably will do it at some stage, but at the moment, it's just a standalone. Um, I would like to know if Raymarine are going to do a Fusion app. If that's the case, it's, it's a lot easier to uh, link. But I can run all that from the STNGs and everything on the uh, Raymarine backbone side. But yeah, it's NEMA anyway, so that's good. But let's just come out of there. Right, the stereo itself, right. Let's have a look. As I say, it takes the iPod. So you flip that over. Pull that. And there's my old iPod already in there 
relatively neat. I could do with a shorter iPod cable to be fair, but it all goes in there, it's all good. That all links back in there. It doesn't have to be iPod, Android will suit as well. As I say, it's the MS UD750. All right, let's flick that back up. Right, power on, literally turn this button on. Just one press, there it goes, all links up. I paid, uh, while this is turning on, I paid, what did I pay for this, about 475 if I remember rightly. Um, that was the best I could, I could sort of like shop around and find. Uh, what was the other thing? I've also got the remote, which is up in the console as well, so I don't have to come to this at all if I don't want to. I can operate it all from the helm. Right, let's, uh, which one is it? There we go. It's got four zones, so you can add as many speakers as you want and call them zones up around the boat. Obviously, this is only a small one, so I've got two uh, Fusion 200 watt speakers in. They're the dual ones, so I can either have the white or black fascias on the speakers. But yeah, so there's your four zones. Obviously, it shows all album art, which is good, which I really like that. Um, it also does Sirius XM, but that I believe that's purely for the state. Uh, Bluetooth, Enemy A2000, Pandora, which I believe again is once again for the States. But that doesn't matter, because I've got DAB here and I've got normal AM, FM, and as I say, the DAB. But very simple to use. Uh, is it this one here? You'll have to bear with me. Right, so you've got playlists, artists, albums, genres, songs, composers, audio books, podcasts. What's that? Nested playlist, genius mixes, iTunes U, iPod settings, settings. So I can operate all the entire iPod from the stereo. Don't even have to go into the iPod at all, it does it all for me. Then if I press this button, then I can select the sources. So obviously I'm on iPod at the moment. Bluetooth, so I can link me Android or any iPhone to it. Auxiliary 2, so you can add stuff to it. Auxiliary one, should have gone the other way. FM, normal FM radio, AM radio, DAB. So if I press the middle one to select, so I'm now loading the DAB. It's now automatically turned off the thing, so I can press that, I think again, sorry, play to scan. It should pick up a signal, but admittedly, being in the dry stack and picking up DAB isn't best. I have noticed this earlier when I was just linking in. You can do presets, it will save everything. But as I say, I'm still new to this, so I'm still learning with it all. There are smooth chill I've just picked up. The actual quality of the sound coming out of these speakers through the Fusion is just phenomenal. I have to admit that. Obviously I've got a mute. So that's now picked up another station, DAB. Where are we? Smooth cue again. I can dim the screen. I can do everything I want, really, to be fair. Go back to menu. So I can scan. Get the brightness right up. So I'm scanning again. Probably pick up the same channel, I expect. That's obviously the best one that's picking up at the moment. As I say, I'm in the dry stack. There's a lot of interference around here. Let's see. So I've now picked up Classic. Now, if I remember, if I press that one. Now, Browse. 
all stations. So right, I've got Classic FM, Talk Sport, LBC, Absolute Radio, UCB1, Kiss, Magic, Kistery, Heart UK, Smooth UK, Gold UK, Heart Dance, Heart 80s, 90s, Capital Extra, Heart 70s, Capital Extra Reloaded, Radio X, LBC News, Capital UK, Smooth Chill, BBC Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3, Radio 4, Radio 6 Music, Radio 4 Extra, Radio 1 Extra, BBC Asian Network, Radio 5 Live, World Service, Radio 5 Live Sport X, and that's that's all the ones that my, uh, my one has picked up. Right, so let's go to... Let's be an old git. Let's go on to magic. Select. So there you go. As I say, you can do all the presets, but I haven't done that quite yet. So yeah, I'm getting there. I'm learning. Let's go back onto iPod. So then I go slide it there. Press select. Robert Palmer. Let's go to the next one. Radiohead. I think I've got this on, uh, what you call it, um, random. So yeah, that's all good. So under here, at the front here, is my other speaker. Generally I have the canopy up anyway. That's the fusion st speakers, 200 watt. As I say, they're the dual ones, so it comes with the black fascia as well. Once again, typical speaker, easy to install. So, if we just move around the boat here, there's the stern one. That's the stern 200 watt speaker. Right, up on the console here, me being me, I had to have the the remote. It's a wired remote. Once again, power on. So I've got I can operate the whole thing from here now. So if I go into that, so I've got play playlist artist. Once again, it copies everything the main stereo is doing straight back here. So now if I press this iPod, where should we go? DAB then, press select, and it's still on magic what I had on the other one. This is extremely easy to install, literally one wire from your main stereo. I can do everything this does from the stereo, vice versa. I can turn it on from here, I can power it all off from here. So I don't need to go back to the main box. Installation wise, as I say, it is literally just that one cable. And that is it. Excuse the lighting, it's a very bright day. But yeah, so that's, that's the stereo. Very impressed. Turn the wood off, power off, keep your finger on it, there it goes, just powering down. Comes with everything you need, so don't have to buy any extras, unless you want to add extras of course, right. Comes with a lovely nice soft rubber waterproof cover, it's 100% waterproof, salt proof. I think it's IPX68, I believe, is the uh, coding for the waterproofness. So, yeah, it's totally waterproof. I'll just put this back on here. As I said, I ran out of space on the console, so I had no choice but to put it in here. And is this going to go on for me, or is it not going to go on for me? Let's just find in the thread. Anyway, I'll do that in a second. Right, so that's that. And I did say I was going to show you 
one of the other latest things is the ASAP spotlight or searchlight which I have mounted here there it is there superb piece kit once again done all the research wasn't horrendously priced to be fair I just wanted something that a lot of commercial fishermen use and they seem to be using this. Being a boat builder, I've worked on a lot of commercial boats and they do show that they do like this particular light. So right, let's go back to the back to the controller. Typical searchlight, very easy to use. Also the remote control, the wide remote was I thought that looks nice. It's not gonna look out of place. It's black bezeled as well. I don't like anything white. It always shows the grime up, so I always try and go for anything that's black. Sometimes you can't, admittedly, but yeah, so easy to use. Turn on. Um, where are we? A little red light comes on to show that it's active. Right, and then do everything from here. Let's just go up to there. So the searchlight is on. It's turning round to me. It does a full 360. I won't come too far around. Right, so you can go up, go down. As I say, left to right, wherever you like it to go. And the beauty with this one here is, it's also two speed. So I can now put it into the standard, standard speed, which is much quicker. That is so much faster. You can just see the light on the boat as I come around. Let's go down. That's it. Right, so very simple. Once again, plug and play. Didn't have to cut any wires. Comes with a long enough wire. I think it was a five meter cable to come back here to fit into there. So that was easy enough. Very simple. Also, like I said to you before, I've also got a remote with it. Right, where are we? I haven't set this up yet, but it's a lovely remote and it's all remote control. So if I'm doing the anchor at the front of the boat and I want to use the headlight, uh, searchlight, I can. That was £35. Waterproof as well. Does everything it does, does everything that the uh, handheld does. Uh, sorry, the wide remote. So yeah, that's all good. I thought it's another piece of kit. Come in handy if I'm doing the anchor up the front. I can always see where the buoy is if I buffed it or if I'm just using it straight from the front. Obviously, you want the engine to be running to make sure your batteries are charging nicely. But yeah, so that that's the... Uh, That's the ASAP searchlight. It's a standard halogen bulb. I couldn't really afford the uh, the other type, the LEDs, but I was happy with this. As long as you've got your engine running, there's no reason why uh, your battery shouldn't, shouldn't drain anyway. Right, let's keep that out of the way there. As I say, I've got to set that up yet. But yeah, so this is, uh, which you may have seen on other videos, this is my boat Sea Vixen. All Ray Marine Axiom screens. I've got an Evolution 100 autopilot fitted. That is here. So that's the autopilot. Dead simple to use. Just literally press on the screen, put your target in, your cursor, and away you go. Literally hit autopilot, and that's it, it's gone. And away you go. Obviously, with all autopilots, you do need to have power steering, which I installed. About 18 months ago so I could have the feature of the autopilot with the uh, Raymarine Axioms also got the R70 VHF top quality does everything I want it's a nice large unit easy to read easy to use I've got my MMSI numbers in there um, GPS ready so I Although I have linked it through all my backbone system, which gives you me uh, GPS anyway into it, I don't didn't need to do that. So 
yeah so that's that's a lovely piece of kit um, I've also got AIS I've got the AIS 650 receiver transmit and receive so that that's good so if people can see me I can pick up everyone else on there providing they've got their uh, AIS turned on I can turn mine on and off also uh, what else have I got I've got the uh, MK10 um, remote that's uh, connected to both my uh, rain ring screens which is the 9 inch and the 7 inch RV um, yeah very handy if, if you do have axioms and they're outside of the, and they're exposed to water which they're 100% waterproof that's not an issue occasionally I will be honest it's very difficult to turn off the unit when you're swiping your finger across the axioms power off button power on's fine you've got nice dry hands in the mornings anyway sort of thing but it can be a pain occasionally it does power off, you just got to keep at it. But I thought, now nah, I sod that, I'm going to get the uh, remote for it. Now, the remote is completely the same and operates everything on both screens simultaneously. I can scroll through, I can scroll through both my screens effortlessly. Basically, it's like the, uh, it's the other Ray Marines they do. Basically, that uh, wired remote here is basically on the side of the screens of the other Raymarines. But I just wanted it independent because I was having trouble turning it off. And all I do then is just press literally this power button. It comes up on the screen, touch it on the screen, it powers off. All good. As I say, I can flick through all the menus, all the apps, home screens. I can set the autopilot on there. Don't need to touch the screen for any of that because it does all the cursors, obviously. But yeah, so that, that is a very handy piece of kit. If as I say, you do have axioms, and they are exposed to, obviously, when you're washing the boat down, coming back in, a bit of spray, anything like that. So that is very, very good. Uh, on an earlier video, I showed you the installation of my Lumar C3 winch. Once again, uh, it's got foot, foot on and off, which is here, which is there. So I'm leaning over to do the anchor. There's the Lumar C3, 1,600 pounds new, just for the winch. Handy piece of kit, if you get your anchor stuck in, it'll, it'll help. Obviously, sometimes I buff the anchor, sometimes I do it by hand, just depending on the situation and where I am. Obviously, I fish uh, Southampton water. I won't use the winch, I can do it by hand. Then I'll go out in the Solent, I can either buff it or I can use the winch. So that's my anchor system there. That's pretty good, not too bad. Um, going back onto the Raymarine stuff, I've also got a Raymarine 210IP day night camera, very handy. Very, very handy. Uh, the next thing I will get for this boat is going to be the 220IB, which is the eyeball type Raymarine, which I will put under the. Uh, under the radar arch up here so I can see stern as well as forward. Um, getting onto the Ray 70 again, I've also got the, although it says a Simrad speaker, uh, it does connect to that so I can have hailing horn, uh, loudspeaker, run everything through it as in through the VHF etc. I've also got the Raymarine Quantum Radar, this is purely Bluetooth straight to the screens so I can have both uh, radars set at different mileage i can have one three miles one at one mile it's very handy once again that's the fusion dab aerial not cheap 110 pounds i think i paid for that but it does give you dab much much better a couple of radar deflectors one on each side always good to be seen out there and uh, I don't know I do from a few friends boats they say that I do look enormous out there so that's good auxiliary outboard there four horsepower six stroke uh, four four horsepower four stroke engine and uh, under there is my 60 horsepower two stroke Bigfoot various rod holders here stainless Steve in Lymington made them 
I can either use the, you know, your typical breakaway rod hold, rod rest, or I do like to stick them in the holders. They're fully adjustable, so I can get in and out. No worries. What else can I tell you about? I can show you inside here. If you look at me other videos, I've also got the Pro Mariner Pro Sport 12 battery charger. All in here. Let me just turn the light on up here for you. Not that you can see much. Uh, there's the Pro Sport. There's the AIS 650. There's all the backbone systems, various backbone systems all plugged in, all nice and neat. HS5 there, so I can link everything into that. There's the autopilot, the VSR switches. If you're gonna do it, I say do it if you can afford it and everything. But hold on, let me just show you this. Move them out of the way. You should be able to see the auto. I've got two two buoyancy aids. There's the autopilot there. Managed to get it all in. So yeah, it's all pretty neat and tidy. As much as I can sort of thing, because it is a tiny console to get what I have got in there. Very buzz bars, fuse boards, breakers. It's all in there. It's all contained. And uh, just before Christmas, I fitted a small fish hold was hoping to chuck some cod in there, only two this season, but hey ho, had two. There's a fish hold there. Various rod holders here for when you're going out. Also got a cool box here. All mounted in a nice stainless frame, all nice and solid. Very handy once again. To be fair, I don't use it for any fish, to be honest. It is purely more stowage on here. Igloo, top of the range again. Another set of rod holders there. And you'll notice a few little sort of like, small little uh, hatches and that. That's various so I can get wires through to where I want them. There's the charging point for my Pro Mariner Pro Sport battery charger. And up here, under this, I've also got a Jabsco Parmax 5 deck wash. A must, a must on all fishing boats. I don't care what you say, it's always handy having a deck wash. Now this is extremely powerful. This is like a pressure washer. This is, this was not cheap. We we're talking over 200 pounds for that, but I wanted the best. Um, just at the end of the day, your boats, your pride and joy, you just want to keep it clean. And that's what it does, keeps it clean. I mean, I'm in a dry stack, I'll get back in and wash it down with fresh water anyway. But there's nothing worse being out there on a sunny day, mackerel guts, scales, slime from rays, eels, and of course, it dries bone hard. Horrible. So, deck wash. If you're gonna have a deck wash, have one. Various hatches again, so I can get to everything to run wires through. Uh, in there I've got a um, first aid kit, I've uh, got all the instructions for all my Raymarine gear in case I need to use it or just to look up something. Plenty of features on all of this stuff. I've fitted a couple of hatches in there, they're, they're sealed. I have various bits of tackle in there and that, just odds and sods that I keep there. I do like to take my tackle each time onto the boat so I know exactly where I am but occasionally you run out of something so it's always handy having a few packets that's in there this side here in this hatch I'll just keep me legs in this one but as I say it's a self-contained unit water can't get in so it's all good But yeah, so there you go. Um, I think we're all there. There's AIS Aerial. That's me Evolution 100.
So yeah, so here we go, the outside of the boat, all looking good. Plenty of stainless, can't have enough stainless. And there she is, Sea Vixen. It has a pull-up canopy, which is good. There's a searchlight, all tickety bird. All stainless cleats. Canopy comes up very easy, seconds really. Let's have a look at the transom. Yeah, she's all there. Twin aerials, one for the VHF, one for AIS. Well, here she is, that's Sea Vixen. Hope you enjoyed it. As I say, it was more looking at the Fusion MSUD 750 and the Spotlight, but that's my latest things on it. As I say, the next thing is the Ray 220 IP eyeball camera. That's what I want, really. So, yeah. I just thought I'd give you uh, reviews on those two. Definitely 100% worth getting the pair of them. But obviously, it depends on your money. But yeah. There's my anchor launcher. Right, thanks for watching. Keep tuned. Press like and subscribe. There will be more. Thanks.